As much as I love new and emerging technologies, tablets are one of those things I just never got. It's not that I didn't enjoy them for the first few days, maybe even weeks. And like most people, I got on the kick of e-reading, but then figured out I enjoy a physical book more. So why have an iPad around? Why have any one of these devices? Well, I finally found a reason, and that reason is pretty awesome, and it's called Sidecar. If you own a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, then you can use your iPad as a secondary screen. Now, for some of you like, so what? I don't want a secondary screen. But for those of you who are artists out there, those of you who do video editing, photo editing, those type of things, and sometimes you have to do it on the road in a hotel room, you can slip this along with your laptop, like your MacBook Pro, your MacBook Air, and boom, baby, you've got a secondary screen. Everywhere you go, you can move your tools over to the secondary screen, applications, things that may bother you like messaging and stuff like that over to a secondary screen and seventh generation so 10.2 inches or you can get one of the bigger models here in the pro line and you've got something pretty spectacular here let's take a look at it okay so what we have here is the ipad now normally you'd probably see the seated next to a laptop not a full desktop I have two screens already connected to a Mac mini, so it's easier for me to record from here than it is from a laptop. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up the application sidecar and you can use spotlight to find that or it's in your tools. And here we have option show sidebar on the right, show touch bar at the bottom, or of course, select your device. So you have a couple options there, but once you collect, select your device, it's going to turn off your screen and then turn all three screens back on. Now you can see that touch controls do not work. The only touch controls that work are on that sidebar on the right, but you can use your mouse. So now you have three screens to move your mouse between. And now we have a third screen. Now, again, imagine being in a hotel room. You've got your Krita open here. You're doing some artwork. I put all the toolbars over on my second screen, or in this case, third screen, so that on the main screen, all I have is Krita and the canvas that I can play with. Or here you can see our Riot chat room for Destination Linux. I have that pulled up. The other thing that's integration is, look, this is from my phone. I recorded that on my phone. I can airdrop it to my computer. There's no having to set up special SFTP connections or anything else. Everything is fully integrated. And here's what it looks like when all three screens are turned on. You can see I have OBS on the main screen, nothing on the screen. Uh, to the left and the iPad has just the information on the Mac OS there, which just makes it absolutely amazing. And this truly is what I'm talking about when I say that Apple, for all of their faults, and there are many that we will get into in this series, they have really done integration better than anybody else out there. Nobody's even in the same ballpark. Whether you have an Apple TV, you have an Apple Watch. You have the AirPods or the AirPod Pros out there. Everything is integrated, and it starts with your phone. So your phone, in this case, if I open up the AirPods when I unwrap them and open up the case, it pops up and says, hey, these are your Air AirPods. Do you want to connect them? If you're next to your Apple TV, it's the same way. And it's the same thing when it comes to the MacBook and all of the components. They're all integrated into a single ecosystem which just makes it an amazing experience because sending files, getting iMessages on your computers from wherever they are. If you have three or four MacBooks, you're going to get your iMessages on all of them. If somebody's FaceTiming you, you're going to get notification if you want it on all of them. If you have a new device that you get from Apple, it's going to be seconds to set it up instead of having to go through all the same painful processes of setting up apps and everything else like you normally do. And that's really probably the biggest star in Apple compared to any other OS out there. I don't care if you're talking about Windows, Linux, doesn't matter. Nobody has integration like Apple has. They're not even in the same world. And it's exciting and it does make you more productive. And it is extremely helpful when you need to move files or not miss messages that are important coming through because all your devices are speaking the same language. And I think this is something that we should all be keeping in mind, especially in the open source world, that this definitely is the future. My productivity has increased tenfold by having all of my devices speak to each other. And little things like being able to turn the iPad into a secondary screen 
actually creates a system in which now I, I want to have an iPad, whereas before tablets, I didn't care about. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they really never, as much as I love technology, I could care less about their existence. And I think that's what's really exciting about what Apple has done here. So integration, absolutely amazing. Sidecar, one of my favorite features I've played with anywhere on any device. And if you have one of the iPad Pros, it's even better because you've got the Apple Pencil and things. So you could draw on it, use that as kind of your drawing tablet. And that would be going on your main screen your main canvas it's just it's amazing it's so good it's almost sickening how good it is but you know what else is that good digital ocean is that good and they sponsor this entire channel so please go out and check out digital ocean by going to do.co slash dln as you know i've been learning python i've been playing with django I've been playing with R Studio, all of that stuff. I can go out there to DigitalOcean, make a droplet for as little as $5 a month and be able to play with that, destroy the droplet when I'm done. And it's just so amazing. When you talk about integration and simple APIs like we talk about with Apple, DigitalOcean has thought of all of that. If you haven't checked them out, I'm going to give you $100 to play with by going to do.co slash DLN. And I'm not just saying this because they're a sponsor. I love them well before they ever became a sponsor. We always talked about them on the Destination Linux podcast. Speaking of which, you should check out the other podcasts that I'm on, Destination Linux, of course, podcast, and Hardware Addicts, where we talk about all the awesome hardware and adventures that we go on there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about Apple's integration here. Is Sidecar something you would use? I know some of you would be like, no, I would never because it's got an Apple on it. But I'm telling you, it's something fantastic. Something to take note of from other people out there who are looking to integrate in their operating systems. Maybe in Linux, somebody can do this type of thing with the Pine tablet and the Pine watch and all of that. But that's really the dots that need to be connected from here on out to really catch up to what Apple's done here because it's just, well, it's awesome. So again, look forward to hearing from you. Let me know what you think in the comments. And until next time, Get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching this video.